and welcome to our live stream. We're coming at you a little early this week. Normally we do this on Friday. This week, you're saying, wait a minute, is it Friday? No, it isn't. It's Thursday, but we're here because we're doing the uh, production of the show tonight here in Nashville. So that's why we're coming to you on Thursday. Now, because it is a little different, all the more reason we need you to tell your friends that we're doing our live stream today, so we hope you'll do that. Pam Case, senior producer for The Huckabee Show, joins me as she always does. She'll be reading questions from you, which we hope you'll start sending right away. Send those questions in the chat. If you'd like more visibility, send a super chat. We've got moderators who are watching the chat to get the questions to us. We'll get to as many as we can during the course of our live stream. Now, this is important. If you haven't already subscribed to the channel, we need you to do it. Part of the reason, we are on our way inching toward 1 million subscribers to our YouTube channel. Wouldn't you like to be one of a million? You might be the one in a million. That's all the more reason to subscribe. Be sure to hit the notification bell so you'll know when we're going to be doing a live stream. Share with us any comments that you have, good, bad, and ugly. We take them all. Be sure to like the uh, YouTube channel that we have. And of course, it's important, share it. Share it with other people. Tell them to join you and us on our live stream today. A lot of topics we're going to be covering today. Some of them I'm pretty sure you can expect. We'll talk about the Democrats' hypocrisy on stolen election claims. That's right. They say one thing, they do something differently. It lives forever on the Internet. Another interesting one this week, of all people, CNN actually roasts the Democrats for their callous language on crime. I mean, when, when the left starts losing CNN, it's serious business. And by the way, if today, just today, we get a thousand likes on this live stream before it ends, I will subject myself to watching some libs of TikTok, if you've never seen those. Some of them are priceless. Can I just tell you that this one is actually worth making sure that you hit that like button because it, it's a little hard to believe that someone is serious. I thought at first it was a parody or a joke. This is a person who is very serious. That's all I'm gonna tell you because I want you to want to see it. But I gotta get a thousand likes during the live stream today. Click that like button right now and tell your friends and other people to do the same. You know, one of the things we enjoy doing is picking out our favorite comment from last week's live stream. This one comes to us from Renee Campbell. She says, and I quote, I disagree with this bailout and any other blanket abuse of taxpayer dollars. Such idiocy in Washington, end quote. What can I say to that other than amen, sister? I agree. Now we have a question for you. We'd love to have you weigh in on it during the course of the live stream. This is our question of the week. If questioning election results is a threat to democracy, as Joe Biden and Democrats say, why is it okay for Democrats to question election results? That's the question. If it's a threat to democracy, is it a threat when they do it or only if Republicans do it? Leave your answers in the chat and the comments section below. All right. Let's get right to some of our more infamous clips of the week. Uh, Joe Biden, in what really I think is the most bizarre presidential speech I've seen in my lifetime, uh, last week at Independence Hall. Why he used Independence Hall is beyond me, quite frankly, because we never really saw Independence Hall. We saw this blood red background. He could have done that in a studio somewhere. Uh, kind of defiled Independence Hall. It was an ugly, dark scene, and he screamed into the teleprompter, but one of his screeches was this one about elections. I will not stand by and watch. I will not the will of the American people be overturned by wild conspiracy theories and baseless evidence-free claims of fraud. I will not stand by and watch elections in this country stolen by people who simply refuse to accept that they lost. No, he won't stand by for that. I, I just, I was stunned by the t tone and yes. tenor of his remarks. I mean, what he said was very um, divisive. 
Yes. For somebody who says he's going to unify the country, he just insulted 74 million people who voted for someone other than him. And he said basically in that speech that we're all extremist, fascist, and a threat to democracy. Who knew? And just a touch scary, to be honest with you. Yeah, it so really it felt was. scary. Uh, some people have said, gee, they would like to have heard that speech in the original German. <laughs> oh, my. Uh, you know, but it, it had that flavor to it, you know yelling and screaming and, and demonizing your opponents, not just saying you disagree with them, yeah. but questioning their integrity, their character, and their patriotism. And that's an ugly thing to do. Yeah, it especially really... for the head of the free world. <laughs> well, um, it was not lost on Peter Ducey, who is the uh, White House correspondent for Fox News, and about the only person in that room who ever asked any serious questions of Corrine uh, Jean-Pierre, who's the press secretary, but he called out the press secretary because if it's really serious that you shouldn't question election results, then how does that square with the fact that she herself questioned not only the election results of 2016, but 2018? Let's watch. You tweeted in 2016 oh, I knew this Trump was stole yeah. an election. You I was tweeted. waiting, Peter, when you were going to ask me that question. Well, here, here we go. <laughs> you tweeted Trump stole an election. You tweeted Brian Kemp stole an election. If denying election results yeah. is extreme now, yeah. why would So let's, let's be really clear. That, that comparison that you made is just ridiculous. I have How been, I have ridiculous. been, well, you're asking me, you're asking me a question. Yeah. Let me answer it. And you said it's Wait, ridiculous. I was... I was talking specifically at that time of what was happening with voting rights and the, what was in danger of voting rights. No, you weren't. You were questioning the results of an election. I mean, I just don't know how she stands there flat-footed and says what she says when it is a blatant lie compared to what she actually did. But the thing that surprises me as much, if not more, is that the other reporters in that room sit there arms folded and never say a word. They act like she didn't really say those things. Mm -hmm. Yes, it's there for the world to see. She did question the election results. So her boss says, if you question election results, you are a threat to democracy and you're an extremist. By that standard, her boss's standard, Corrine Jean-Pierre is a threat to democracy and is a fascist. There you go, gotta be. Now, Peter Ducey wasn't finished. He asked her about the 2016 election very specifically. Her answer is less than satisfying. If we're all in agreement that it is incorrect to say the 2020 election was stolen, what about the 2016 election? Look, I'm not going to go back to where we were or what happened in 2016. We're going to focus on the here and now. We're going to focus on what's happening today. No, you're not. You've been focused on what happened in 2020. You've never let go. You continually castigate Donald Trump and the 74 million people who voted for him. And for you to stand there and to say, we're not going to go back. We're going to go forward. I'm not going to talk about 2016 because we're looking forward. Well, you, you only have a rewind button that'll take you to 2020. And that you are more than willing to camp out on, build a tent, and spend a few weeks on vacation. So I just find that so disgusting. Yeah. I just want people to be honest and say, yeah, you know what, I said that stuff, and I probably shouldn't have, because I realize now how bad that sounds, and, and I wouldn't say it if I had the chance. That would have been different. But to deny you said it, to deny that it was what it was, but to say that the other side, if they do it, why, they're villains. And they're hung up on yesterday. Yeah. yeah. Mm -mm. But I can be hung up on something from, I'm just yeah. amazed at that. All right, I want to go to Pennsylvania. I happen to have been there yesterday in Pittsburgh. Uh, interestingly, I was with a Congressman uh, Guy Resenthal, who's very articulate, brilliant guy, and he's only been in Congress a short time, a real rising star in the conservative movement. Uh, I've already decided we've got to get him as a guest on the Huckabee Show. Naval uh, Academy grad and uh, was in the Naval JAG Corps, served in Iraq. What's interesting, even in a basically purple district in the suburbs of Pittsburgh, 
He doesn't even have an opponent. No Democrat is running against him. I've not seen that. I've never heard of it. I've never had a race in my life where I was unopposed. Heck, I had opposition in the primaries and the general election. And there's an old maxim in politics that uh, Senator David Pryor of Arkansas used to say, uh, good man, Democrat, but a fine, fine gentleman. And he would always say there's only two ways to run, unopposed and scared. Well, I always ran scared because I never ran unopposed. And so he ran unopposed. I told him, I said, I can't even relate to it. Well, I was in Pittsburgh. I saw Dr. Oz. He was at the event that I did for, uh, for Guy and um, had a nice chat with him. He's running against John Fetterman, who is a character. And this is a guy that the more I find out about him, the more strange it is that people of Pennsylvania would consider voting for him to be in the U.S. Senate. Um, he had a stroke a few months ago, and I'm sympathetic that he's had that very serious health concern. But it really does present a question, is he capable of being in the Senate? Can he handle the kind of pressure and schedule or is he incapacitated? And that's a legitimate question. That's not taking shots at him for his health. But he does have trouble putting a sentence together and he always has this excuse, well, Dr. Oz is making fun of a stroke survivor. No, what he's doing is saying, this is a job that requires an extraordinary level of capacity. Anyway, let's watch. Please understand the stakes in this race. Send me to Washington, D.C. to send so I can work with Senator Casey and I can champion the union way of life in Jersey, in, excuse me, in D.C. I mean, it sounds as confused as Joe Biden talking about, I'll fight for Jersey. Oh, I don't live there. It's, I'll do it in D.C. for the people of Pennsylvania. And then uh, this is disturbing. You know, you want a public official when one is elected to be strong and principled, not to be somebody's uh, errand uh, boy. And he was talking to teachers unions in Pennsylvania on Labor Day, and he basically hands them the Senate seat if he gets elected and says, I'll do whatever you want. You think I made that up? Listen to his own words. I'm not going to sit up here and, and pretend that I know exactly what's needed. I'm going to turn to you. If you send me to Washington, D.C., you'll be the first people that I'll call and want to sit down and meet with and find out what you need, what would be most helpful. How can we be most supportive? What are the resources you need? Because ultimately, you're the professionals. I'm not going to tell you how to do your job. You're going to tell me how I can do my job better to support all of you. So what it means, if you are a voter in Pennsylvania and you vote for John Fetterman, you've basically handed your vote as a proxy to the Pennsylvania teachers unions and said, just do whatever the teachers union says. And that's what John Fetterman has pledged publicly to do. I find it amazing. Mm. Hey. Let us remind you, hit the subscribe button. We want to get to a million. We want you to be part of the million. The million viewer march is what we're going to be. Uh, hit the notification bell. Leave us a comment. Be sure to like and share. And remember, if we get a thousand likes in this live stream, and you're going to want us to get there, so be one of the thousand in this live stream today, I will be sharing with you a unbelievable video from the Libs of TikTok. So smash that like button right away. Pam, I know we probably by now got some questions. We coming. have a few, Governor, a few plus some. Uh, Debbie's writing today, Governor, I don't understand why there is no one with the authority to fire people in the DOJ and the FBI for everything they've done. Well, it's not that they don't have the authority, they don't have the will. They don't want to fire these people that are abusing the rights of citizens. That's even more frightening. Mm. Um, there is corruption at the highest levels. I think there are a lot of good, decent, hardworking, conscientious public servants up and down the line in both the FBI and the DOJ, but they're not running the place. They just work there. And should some people be fired? Long time ago they should have. But it hasn't happened because the people at the top are protecting the ones who are protecting the establishment of D.C. Tragic. 
As we get closer to midterms, Gov, this I think a lot of people want to know the answer to this question that Karen is asking you today. How can we be confident in the next election being fair? Ooh. Wow. By the way, I'm trying to get my pen. I finally oh, okay. got it. Okay, there we go. <laughs> um, I, I think there are going to be questions about the election and the integrity. A number of states, to their credit, have taken significant steps to make it harder to cheat. Easier to vote, harder to cheat. Now, you're going to hear people say, oh, they tried to make it hard to vote. That is not true. By the way, 87% of Americans, including Democrats and Republicans, this is across the board, support the idea of having photo ID in order to vote. Because most people, whether you're a Democrat or Republican, you understand that if someone votes illegally, they essentially have canceled out your vote, your legitimate vote. So shouldn't we all want that? And this nonsense that, well, poor people, uh, they don't know how to use a photo ID. What an insult. Just because you're poor doesn't mean you're stupid. And it doesn't mean you're incompetent and incapable of showing up with a photo ID that you got to have to do basically anything in our culture today. So that's a false argument. Mm. So I do think the elections will be better than they were. They still won't be perfect. But the single most important thing, vote. For heaven's sakes, go vote. Because the one thing I can assure you of, if you stay home and don't vote, and the only people that fanatically go out and vote are the people who want to destroy the country, they'll win. So show up and do not miss an election. Back to the DOJ and FBI. Uh, Anita is asking today, can I sue the government for violations the Democrats have done within the DOJ and FBI? The courts would say you have to have standing. That means that you have to show that you have personally been injured by whatever decision they've made. And the courts are pretty harsh on that. So if you just say, I don't like it, or it affected me as a general citizen, that's usually not enough. You have to show that you went to a polling place to try to vote and they wouldn't let you. Or you went to a polling place to try to vote and they said, oh, uh, you're dead doppelganger has already been here and they voted for you. Now your vote has been erased, then you would have standing. But just to be ticked off, oh, gee, I wish that would work like that. I'd file a suit today if I could. Jay Luther is uh, asking this afternoon, Governor, can you address the issue of Israel admitting to killing an American citizen journalist in the West Bank, yet insisted there will be no disciplinary action taken? Uh, the White House said that's okay. No, I don't think anybody has said it's okay, and, and I don't know that Israel, I'm not familiar that they have taken responsibility and said that their soldiers were the ones mm. who were responsible for the death of a journalist. Uh, the journalist was caught in crossfire, and I'm not familiar. Now, if, that's, if, if the Israelis have now said that their people did it, please send that to me because mm -hmm. I am not familiar with it. Absolutely, add it to the chat. In the yeah, add it to the chat because the last I read, there was still much uh, dispute as to whether it came from the Israelis or the Palestinians, but the journalists caught in the crossfire. It's a tragedy, whatever, and whoever might have been responsible. Um, so nobody is trying to say it's okay. And, and let me defend the White House. I don't think the White House is saying it's okay either. Nobody would say that's okay. Right. All right, Governor, um, a little shift in subject here. Lisa and Mandy on the road asking, will the food prices ever go down again? Not as long as the leftists are in control because the reason food prices have gone up, in part it's the economic situation of inflation, uh, the regulation, but it's because you've got to understand the far left is so committed to the Green New Deal and to believing that climate change is so important that they are attacking the agricultural industry. Uh, we're seeing it already in nations like the Netherlands where they are ordering farmers to uh, get rid of 95% of their herds of cattle because they do not want the cattle emitting methane gas through their um, bovine flatulence. How is that for being gentle and calling it? <laughs> but that's, I mean, that's nuts to most of us. We're thinking, are you kidding? You honestly believe that cows passing gas is the greatest threat to the world. But there are some crazy people that are creating this policy. These are the same lunatics 
who want everyone in California to have an electric car and demand that you must have one by 2035. But this week, they're all turning their air conditioners off and told not to charge those electric cars because they're running out of juice. Folks, how crazy is it when your policies don't match reality? So the question you ask is, will food prices go down? And I'm being honest with you. As long as we have crazy people running government, no, they won't. They'll get worse. Let me mention specifically, California is really the salad bowl of the world. More fruits and vegetables are farmed there than anywhere else in the United States. But the government of California every year makes it harder and harder for the farmers of California, mostly in the San Joaquin Valley, to be able to successfully farm because they're more interested in protecting the, um, the little snail called the, uh, was it the darter? Um, uh, gosh, I, yeah, I can't remember. Anyway, but it's, it's this little minnow thing. And they've made it impossible for the farmers to be able to store enough water to take care of their crops. So this is the kind of nonsense that people of California put up with. But by the way, the dumb stuff they do in California, it affects the cost of your groceries that are on your table tonight in Mississippi. Don't ever forget that. You're not isolated from these dumb policies. So I wish I could say it'll get better. And quite frankly, we get different leadership who bring their brains to work with them each day. It might, and it should. We could feed the whole world. The U.S. has got such agricultural capacity. Um, we're the most efficient in our farming methods. And nobody produces better, more nutritious food than we do. We do it more safely than any nation on earth. We ought to make it easy for the farmers, not hard. Governor, um, Katie is asking this afternoon, is it safe to vote by mail? Um, that's a great question, Katie. It's safer than not voting, but I'm of the opinion that if you can go vote in person, that's the ideal. And uh, my wife and I typically vote early because um, usually most states have early voting capability. So you're voting in person, uh, but you're not going on election day when you may fear there's gonna be a long, long line. Check and see if that's an option where you live. But a lot of states, I think voting by mail is fine, but between trusting the overall government and trusting the post office to deliver it on time, I just say, if you can, show up in person, either early or on election day. Uh, a little shout out for you this afternoon, uh, Governor Glenn Hodge is saying, when you were here in Great Falls, Montana, several years ago, I got to shake your hand. So a little hello Hi. from uh, Hi, Glenn. Glenn. Thank you. <laughs> All right, uh, Tricia Falk is asking today, how can people stop the teachers unions from backdoor teaching CRT and gender issues? It seems like the unions will always find a way to teach what they want. That's sadly, for the most part, true. Uh, there's really two things that a typical citizen can do. One, uh, if you have kids in the public schools, or even if you're just a taxpayer, you don't have, to have a kid in the school, you're paying for it. So it's still your business, whether they say so or not. Show up at the school board meetings, be very careful that you do your homework, that you're researched. If you accuse a school of teaching something like CRT, have some uh, specifics, get the documents, get the textbooks, have it right in front of you so that you can show it. If you're uh, saying that they are um, pushing for kids to use certain pronouns or pushing some sex ed, make sure you can document it. So that's one way. The other, and this is tough, but if there's a way to get your kids um, in an alternative educational environment other than one that is totally influenced by teachers union, I mean, it may be the best bet, whether it's homeschooling, uh, church school. Um, some parents, you know, that's, that's very expensive in certain instances to be in a private school. Uh, push for your politicians to give you school choice so that you can take the money that is being spent on your children in school and you can spend it where you want it to be spent so that your children uh, are going to be educated in a way that's consistent with your values. But we're in a mess in the country because of that. There's some great teachers, there's some great schools. Not all of them are pushing CRT, but frankly, some are that I am shocked by. 
And I'm convinced in some cases, the educators in that district, they're not even aware of it. They just assume it's okay because somebody handed it to them. But be an informed and an involved parent. That's the biggest thing you can do. Um, Governor, a uh, question from R.A. Falklum. What I find amazing that it's the first time she, talking about Corrine, by the way, has ever been prepared for a question. Yeah. <laughs> Referring back yeah, to she that opened earlier. up that little notebook and then just totally messed through it the whole way. Uh, it, was, <laughs> it was amazing. Hey, let me remind you, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Hit the notification bell, leave us a comment, and remember, I got to get a thousand likes in the live stream, so please hit that like button. You do want to see the video. I, I know I'm teasing you a little bit here. Give us a thousand likes and I'll show you the video. But that's the only way I can probably get you bribed enough to hit that like button, which I hope you're doing right now. Well, I want to go to a, this is a CNN, which I had to look twice to see, was this really CNN's report? But what they're pointing out is that Cities run by far left Democrats where they let criminals go on the street and r just reoffend. The disastrous results are pretty obvious. This is CNN. Watch. When the state legislature finally acted on criminal justice this summer, they decided to focus on semantics instead of solutions, officially replacing the term inmate with incarcerated person in state laws. Seriously, that's what they did. Now, sometimes we forget that public safety is a fundamental civil right. And it's often lower income neighborhoods that suffer the most from high crime, while wealthier neighborhoods stay relatively safe. In fact, black and Hispanic Democrats are more likely than white Democrats to support increased spending on local police. That's according to a Pew survey from late last year. Look, politicizing crime seeks to gain from other people's pain. But trying to ignore crime for ideological reasons is both callous and clueless. And it's sure to promote a political backlash. Well, you heard it there. That was CNN. I mean, it's finally kind of refreshing to see that even CNN can't ignore the quite obvious. Right. I'm wondering if CNN will catch this. This is Lori Lightfoot from Chicago, the mayor there. She's raised all kinds of sand because Governor Greg Abbott of Texas has been sending illegals um, who have been pouring into his state over two million this year alone. And he started loading them up on buses sending them to New York, Washington, D.C., and Chicago, and Chicago. Why? Because they're sanctuary cities. They have pretended that they want these people, that they welcome all of these illegal immigrants. That is until they start getting them. Now, when Lori Lightfoot is asked the question, she says she'd just love to take them all. Let's see. Texas, obviously, if none of these uh, migrants were sent anywhere else, would have to bear the, all the brunt of this themselves. Aren't these migrants better off going to places like Chicago, welcoming cities to get cared for? Well, you know, I think Alderman uh, Raboyos kind of alluded to this. Um, I'm happy to take uh, and drain Texas of all of its residents. I wouldn't want to live in a state with a governor like that. Oh, no, she wouldn't want to live in a state with a governor like that. I hate to break this to you, Lori Lightfoot. I wouldn't want to live in a city if you were the mayor. That's for sure. And if I had a choice between Greg Abbott and you, I'd take Greg Abbott every day of the week and twice on Sunday. I'm telling you. You want a sanctuary city? You say you want to drain Texas and bring them to Chicago? Governor Abbott, I hope you heard that. Get some more buses. Send more to Chicago. She wants them. She wants to have the cost of making sure these folks have health care, education. These are illegals. Now, we're not talking about people uh, who are refugees because of some war that they have escaped from. We're talking about people who knowingly, willingly, illegally crossed our border. Most of them unattached, unmarried males between the ages of 18 and 30. And Lori Lightfoot said she'd love to have them all. So please, Governor Abbott, send them to her. Give her what she wants. I'm sure the people of Chicago will be thrilled to be the sanctuary city. Um, we got to get to a couple of things. By the way, we've hit our thousand. So this is uh, a quick video. I just want to show it to you because it's the assistant principal of a school who asked, who was asked, would he hire a conservative? Watch what he says. What would you do that as a principal if you knew there was a conservative applying? Would you hire such a no. person? 
Yeah. We have like very specific questions, and like ultimately, like our diversity, equity, and inclusion question, like our DEI question, is yeah. like if people don't answer the, that question right. Yeah. They're just an automatic not. Like what? If they say something that lends itself to be colorblind, yeah. it's like you know, like everyone is equal, like those things that are well-intentioned statements, but they're missing the depth of understanding. Yeah. It's like that person. Right now. Yeah. You can't make this up. First of all, how did he become an assistant principal? Every other word is like, I don't know, like what I like about, well, it depends on like if they are maybe like gonna, what is? The, Outside of like, I only heard four other words. I mean, my gosh, <laughs> this guy is a, an administrator in a school and he talks like a valley girl, for gosh sake. What's wrong with these people? And he inflects up with a question at every sentence. If you get an education, for gosh sake, act like you have it. Even pretend that you were educated. Don't talk like some third grader or some 14 year old junior high girl who didn't get invited to the dance. That's disgusting. Much less to the fact that he says he wouldn't hire a conservative uh, because they're not diverse enough. I love his sense of diversity. Okay, I told you this, you, if we got a thousand likes, I'd show you a video and I said, you won't believe it. I know that one was one hard to believe. This is one for the ages. And because you gave us at least a thousand likes today, I'm gonna share with you, and I wanna set this up. This is not parody, this is not satire. I thought it was. This is an actual person who really believes in what she's saying. Watch this. I am a Therian. I believe that my soul is an animal soul. I know and I have a fundamental understanding that I am overall human. I experience something called species dysphoria. The dysphoria causes me to feel I'm in the wrong body, which is why I always wear this mask in my ears. I make these videos for other Therians to know it's okay to express themselves. And I try to normalize this harmless identity. You try to normalize this harmless identity. <laughs> Honey, you need help. You really need help. Wearing little ears and this mask and saying, I know I'm in the wrong body, I'm an animal inside, but I have this human body and I don't know what to do. I have species dysphoria. That's where this nonsense about gender dysphoria and everybody's now questioning, maybe they're really not a guy, they're a girl, they're not really a girl, they're a guy. Now we got people saying, I'm not really a person, I'm an animal. The country has gone nuts, flat out nuts and that's good indication of it. I, I'm sorry to be so blunt, but I'm not gonna pretend that, well, this is okay. These are people with just different views. No, these are crazy people. These are people who need serious help and they're delusional. There's nothing animal about that person other than in her own twisted mind. And we've gotta stop believing that this is all okay because it isn't okay. Uh, we need to act like human beings and adults and we can be civil to each other, but we can't agree to let this go on and just act like it's normal. It's not normal. That's my lesson for the day.